Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to my talk about QML.jl. So just to be clear about any ambiguities, this is about uh, graphical user interface toolkit based on uh, Qt. Also welcome to everyone online. I hope my son was also able to join me uh, online, but uh, we'll see tonight if he watched the stream or not. So uh, QML.jl, this talk is mostly about what's new, but still um, before starting, we'll take a look at what is the traditional buildup of a QML.jl program. So it's based on the Qt uh, graphical user interface toolkit, uh, which has itself two components. One of these is QML, which uses a separate markup language for the graphical user interface. So basically you need the Julia program and this markup file. Uh, the data exchange then happens through different kinds of connectors that we will illustrate using this simple toy uh, problem here. So basically the, you write a Julia code um, where you have some observables, standard Julia observables that you connect to the graphical user interface. You can also uh, make functions available on the QML side us using the add QML function macro. And then basically you just load the QML file, introduce so the observable as properties, and in that sense you can uh, make the GUI that we saw previously work. The QML file is uh, basically a list up of uh, different components, the main one here being the text field that when you enter a value uh, will double this value by calling a Julia function. So that's a very simple example. So now I want to highlight uh, what is new and the, the kind of program that we will make during this presentation. So the main uh, novelty of the uh, QML.gl with respect to the last major release is that we upgraded to Qt6, which gives all kinds of enhancements. But also we introduced a table model, so the Example application here will be used to do all kinds of manipulations on a Julia data frame using the graphical uh, user interface. So it will allow us to uh, insert columns, delete columns, edit the values of uh, data like we're doing here on the standard IRIS data set that comes with uh, data frames. And when we finish uh, manipulating the data set, we can then save the file uh, here I had already a file that had the same name, but because it's a, yeah, a big standard GUI toolkit, you see that it automatically thinks of asking you if you want to destroy your own file, so I don't have to do anything for that. And then we can load back the file or load another file. See that uh, indeed it uh, can load the second file without crashing. And then... Um, load our original file again to check that indeed the saved file is what we get back with the renamed columns and the incorrect values. And also on the Julia file you have immediately the data frame as it was manipulated in the in the GUI, so you don't necessarily need to, to save it. So to make this uh, application, the first step here uh, that I wanted to show is that you can make it in a kind of graphical user interface design tool as since QML is used by quite a lot of people. Uh, there are some tools that exist to um, manipulate it. And I forgot to start the movie here. So the design studio, basically, I will skip over it quite quickly. It allows you to, using a drag and drop interface that I must admit is a bit frustrating for me at least, but I'm not a GUI design expert, uh, allows you to uh, draw up the GUI, so here, we use this tool to make, to make the global layout of the application, replacing the table view with the right rectangle, because unfortunately this tool does not support the table view, even though table view is a QML component, not all QML components are supported in this tool by uh, Qt themselves. So once we have the QML uh, to load it, into Julia, you need to make a few small changes, but these are fairly minor. As you can see, this is the complete diff that you take from the automatic QML to the Julia um, file, or the Julia compatible QML file, let's say. And then we can load this into our Julia code. So here, 
the bottom of the file is the same as before. We have the, the call to load QML to load the file. Before that, of course, there's a few more things because we now have a fully functional uh, data frame editor. So what are the main things that we need to do? Uh, we need to override a few functions to allow uh, setting and getting of the headers, setting of the elements. And then we have uh, the, the longest function is actually the one to load the data frame because there we'll do all the setup to set the, uh, set the headers um, and to set actually the Julia table model. So the table model itself, it is then communicated using here this Julia properties struct, which contains all accessible properties, which is defined at the top here. So here we have the actual table model, which by default will be empty until the user clicks uh, the load button. Uh, so the Julia code itself is quite simple and consists of only standard Julia functions uh, using uh, basically a kind of translation between what the QML table model interface expects and what is exposed by the data frames. And then we can use this in the QML file itself. And so you see the key component here, which I will just show, is that you have a standard uh, table view component, which as a key property has the model itself, which will be more or less directly our data frame, slightly translated sometimes using the, the functions that we provided. So I'll not go into detail in the interest of time. Uh, one new feature I wanted to show, which was uh, thanks to Janis uh, in the room here who requested it. Uh, you can now Modify a single, if you work with the one main QML file, you can just modify this. And if you save it, automatically you will see the update in the running Julia program on the, on the GUI. It was, for this functionality, not hard to do, uh, but it needs uh, a bit more extension. So yeah, what is new, I already briefly mentioned, the model and the fact that we are in Qt6 now. Uh, one important uh, consequence of that is that we can use Wayland. The live coding I've shown also, and the new version also comes with uh, a bit more robustness. What I hope to do in the future is to improve support for uh, Maki, so for the uh, plotting toolkit. Uh, maybe split off this data frame support into a separate, more elaborate package so that you can just have a data frames widget in any GUI that you want to make without having to repeat this code. Uh, live coding needs to be extended to multiple files. I also want a web view, but this requires compiling uh, the Qt web view component, which contains Chromium. Compiling that on uh, Yggdrasil with binary builder is not so easy. And threading integration is also still a work in progress, even though the base uh, functionality in Julia to allow foreign threads is there. Uh, so that concludes the presentation. If you have any questions. Can you comment more on this threading integration? What you mean is that? The, which in threading integration? Ah, yes. So um, it's possible to have foreign threads in Julia so that you have uh, a thread, for example, the rendering thread in an OpenGL uh, Qt application. If uh, you do nothing special and it calls a Julia function, the application will crash. Uh, so Julia now has functionality to register these foreign threads, but I tried exploiting this and there were still problems. Like, uh, it didn't crash anymore, but it, I got a kind of lockup and I haven't had the time yet to investigate why it doesn't work as it should at the moment. Thank you. Next question. Okay. No question. Thank you. Thank you.